because you don't want to keep none of this stuff already in. If it's a situation or a problem that it seems like it's just so hard that you cannot take care of or you don't have no solution about it, I want you to write it down and put it on the altar. If it's a concern or a situation that is heavy on your heart, even concerning someone else, a family member, a, a situation or a concern on your job, write that stuff down and put it on the altar. We don't want to keep any of this stuff down inside of our hearts. We don't want to hold on to any of this stuff. If it's some things that you even went through in your past, and it seemed like it just keep on taunting you. I want you to write that stuff down. And I want you to put that stuff on the altar. If there's anything, anything that you are holding, even inside of your heart, that you do not even discuss with anybody, or that is extremely heavy, I want you to put that on a piece of paper and write it on the altar, stand in the gap for your children, write their names down, write the problems and concerns that you have for them, your parents, write their names down, your siblings, write their names down. We want you to make sure you got all this heaviness up off of you right now because we don't want to be weighted down. Um, we don't want to hold this stuff within that we have no even no control over that thing you're concerned about on your job write it down that thing that you're concerned about bills and your financial situation relationships whatever it may be i want you to simply write it down on a yellow sheet of paper and some red pen get rid of all this stuff we want to release all this stuff we want to release all this stuff we don't want to keep holding all this stuff in <laughs> Because God want to do something for us. He want to do something for us and he been concerned about us all these years. But it's getting crucial for us to get concerned about our own salvation. So in the midst of you standing in a gap for somebody and writing these things out to somebody, for somebody, I want you to make it personal. I want you to make it personal and write down some things concerning you that you know, that you want God to help you with, that you want God to fix. See, because you know you better than anybody else, at least you think you do. Because the Bible declares that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? We don't even know what is in our own hearts. So we want to write that stuff down that we do know. That is a defect. That's what I just heard. Because a lot of us got a lot of defects going on. And yet we do not want to admit them or neither do we want to face them. See, these are some things that's down inside of our heart. The Lord been dealing with us concerning our hearts. He want us to get our hearts together. He want us to get our hearts together. And in us getting our hearts together, that means we got to soul search our own selves. We have to check our own selves while we want to check everybody else while we want to look at everybody else while we want to point fingers and wag heads or discuss everybody else check yourself says God we need to check ourselves we do and I told you guys on Friday how the Lord has been having me to practice some things concerning me, my own self. See, because can't nobody put me in heaven and hell. They can't they can say what they want to, think exactly how they want to. But as for me, I, me, I'm the only one that's going to be standing before God for my own individual selves. So make this thing individual. Make it an individual thing because the Bible declares that we have to seek out our own soul salvation. We have to do that for our own selves. We have to approve our own self. Because if you approve your own self, you don't have to worry about nobody else judging you or coming to you or saying anything to you because you are simply confessing this thing openly unto God. Even though he already know he wants you to come to him. Ask him for some help. Let's ask him for some help on today for all our own selves. Why we always want to point the blame. Why we always want to, and we've been doing it every since the very beginning of time. Let's check ourselves today. So I want to write some things down for other people as well as my own self. So 
by all means, I'm going to give you guys just a little bit of time while I write down some things before we go any further. Before we go any further, we want to empty ourselves out that God can enter in. If we got all this stuff cluttered inside of our hearts, we ain't got no room for God. So we want to empty out all this stuff. We want to get rid of all this stuff. We want to pour it all on him because he said, come to me. Cast your cares on me because I care for you. That means that he's concerned about your situation. He's concerned about what's going on in your home. He's concerned about what's going on on your job. He's concerned about all that stuff that's mangled and entangled in your heart. He's concerned about that thing that's weighing heavy on your mind. And you seem like you cannot seem to forget or stop thinking about it. He concerned about any and every area in your life. Whether you may believe it or not, he is really concerned about us. So let's get rid of all this stuff today. Let's put all this stuff away. Let's put it to the side. Let's give it to God right now. Let's give it to God right now.
The ones that you don't see, please pray for them. Make sure that you keep your Monica and her children in prayer. She was diagnosed with COVID-19. So please, keep her in prayer. Keep my family in prayer. For loss and death. Daniel's family in prayer for God and death. We want to make sure that we pray for one another. Please, don't forget to stand in the gap for your children. Write their names down on a sheet of paper and put it on the altar. Your loved ones, as well as yourself. As well as yourself. We want to give all this stuff to God right now. We want to give it all to him right now. situations of your people, God. We throwing it down at your feet. We throwing all that stuff down at your feet, God. That, 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 that thought in our mind where we believe that we can't find a job or we can't get a job. We laying that down at your feet, God. That financial burden. That financial verse. We laying it down at your feet, God. We laying down that lost hope at your feet, God. All this stuff that we hold it inside of our hearts and inside of our minds, God. We laying it down at your feet. Every addiction, God, to try to overtake us. We laying it down at your feet. Every stronghold, God, that it seems like we cannot break. We land it at your feet, God. Every old time, every soul time, Father God, they got us bound and shackled. We land it at your feet. We land all that pride. All that haughtiness. All that stuff at your feet. Before you start, Papa, please, or run everybody for me, please. We land all that stuff at your feet. We land it at your feet right now, God. We want you to touch us in our minds and in our hearts right now, Father God. Touch our ear gates. Make sure you, you anoint the ears as well, please. Touch our ear gates on today, Father God, that we'll be able to receive some things, God, because it seems like the cares of this world and, and the things of this life, Father God, has got us so clouded that we cannot keep, see. We cannot keep our minds on you, God. We have not had our minds on you, Father God. Oh, God, help us on today, Father God. We want to tell you that we're sorry because we want to be in your face, God. We want to receive something from you, God. We want to be complete, God. We want to be caught up in you, God, not in the cares of this world, not in the things of what we think we should have or what we think we should be or, or how we think we should accomplish it, God, the lusts of the flesh and of the mind and even of our visuality. Jesus, help us in our eyes, God. Touch our eyes on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Touch our eyes on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, transform some things. 
transform some things, Father God, in the name of Jesus, inside of our hearts and, and in our eyes. Oh God, touch our visual interpretation of things, God. Touch our eyes on today, God. Touch our eyes, God, that we can visually see some things. Remove the scales off our eyes on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Uncork our ears, God, that we can hear some things. Oh, God. We empty ourselves out right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we're throwing it all at your feet right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Because these things have become weighty to us, Father God. These, these things have overtaken us, Father God. And, and we don't want to keep holding on to this stuff, Father God. But it seems like it's kind of hard for us, Father God, to look up to you for the help, God. Even though we know that our help comes from you, Father God. It, it seems like it's kind of hard, God, because our visual interpretation, Father God, has got us clouded, Lord. Our, our visual interpretation. Interpretation, God has got us blinded from simply seeing afar. Ah, Jesus, help us, God. Oh, God, if he had it, oh, oh, God, we ask you right now, God, to, to take all this stuff that we have, Father God, that, that concern that we have on our job, God, that, that concern we have in our relationships, God, that, that concern we have about our families, God, that, that concern we have about our living situation, God, uh, that concern we have, Father God, about our finances, God, that, that concern we have, God, in our hearts, God, that, that concern we have about our health, God, uh, oh God, we want to give it to you. We want to give it to you. We want to give it all to you right now, God, that concern that we have, Father God, about our transportation, uh, that concern we have, God, about people, Lord, uh, Help us, God. We want to give it all to you right now. We want to pour it to you right now, Father God, because we don't want to be so crowded, God, that we cannot get in your face, God. We don't want to be so wrapped up in our minds, God. Oh, God, that we cannot concentrate on you. We are distracted, Lord. We don't want to be so bound, God, that we cannot break loose and simply be free through you, God. Oh, God, help us, God. The half chance of things, God. Take away that sadness, God. Take away that sorrow, God. Take away that fear, God. Take away all that stuff, Father God, because we want you, God. But it seems like it's hard for us, Father God, to obtain it away that we desire you. Let me go see. So help us out today, Father God, to empty these things out, Father God. Because we know you are concerned about us, God. We know without a shadow of a doubt, Father God, that we are something important to your Lord. So take all this stuff, Father God. You didn't tell us to cast it on you for nothing. And you didn't see your son Jesus for nothing. So we're going to give it to your God because you said everything that we have, Father God. He cuts it and go see. And everything that we go through, oh God, it's nothing unto you, Father God. It is but a small matter. Oh God, take this stuff, God, that we have no control over. Take this stuff, God, that we have no solutions to. Take this stuff, God, that causes us, Father God, to be bound in our thoughts and entrapped and engaged in our mentality state. Take this stuff, God. Oh God. Take it away from us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Because these seeds, Father God, in the name of Jesus, have a tendency of keeping us in a place of darkness. And you are not a God of darkness. But you are a God of light. Oh God, take this stuff away from us, Father God. That we feel hopeless about. Take it away from us, Father God. That we feel empty. Take it away, Father God. Oh God, because we know, Father God, that you can, because it ain't nothing impossible with you. Oh God, we ask you to take it away on today, God. Take away all that bitterness that we have towards folk. Oh God, take away all that hate, Father God, that's all been down in our hearts and we don't even know about. Oh God, take away the stoniness in our hearts, God. Oh God, take away all that stuff, Father God. 
God that's contrary to your word. Oh God, take it away, God. Take it away, God. Take away, God, that unforgiveness. Take it away on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, that spirit of accusation. Take it away, God. Oh God, that we won't lead to our own understanding. Oh God, he cut me the loco, shut me like I see. We throwing it at your feet, God. All the evil he don't go see. The evil thoughts that we have, God. The opinions that we have, God. Take it away, God. Take away all that stuff right now, God, that we're going to have a clean, clear mind. That we can understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. Take away all that stuff, Father God, that's holding us bound in our hearts, God. That's got a shackle, Father God. That's got to sing it all the way to the bottom, Lord. Take it away, God. Take away that disobedience and that rebellion, that jealousy, God. That pride and that haughtiness. Take it away, God. Take it away, God. We don't want to hold on to this stuff, God. Because this stuff, Father God, is not pleasing in your sight. Take it away, Father God. Take away that lying spirit and that spirit of hate. Oh, God. Take it away, God. Oh, God, we ain't going to see. I got shut that it don't go see. Take it away, God. Take it away, Father God. The point of the finger and the wagon of the hate. Oh, God, take all this stuff out of our hearts on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Because we want to see you face to face, God. The idea I got shut now. But we know if we got all this stuff inside of us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we won't be able to see your face. <laughs> Take away that manipulated you don't go see. <laughs> Take away that deceit he got in it don't go shut now. <laughs> Take it away, Father God, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Any crime we ever want, we let your feet. <laughs> Any title we ever take, we let at your feet. <laughs> Any position we ever accomplish, God, we let at your feet. <laughs> Any and everything we want to let at your feet, Father God. <laughs> Take away that spirit of idolatry. <laughs> we want to let it at your feet, Father God. <laughs>
Touch us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Touch us in our hearts and in our minds, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Remove everything from our hearts and our minds. It's not like you, God. Remove any jealousy, if it's in the background, tell me, and come in this life, just malicious, just the pain, hate, any bitter, this fornication, not special, anything, think about, think about, think about, think about, Father God. Remove that haunting spirit and that empty spirit, that spirit of pride, Father God, that spirit of accusation on today, that gossip of the spirit, Father God. Remove the point of the fingers and even the wagon of the head on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you to remove these things, Father God, because they easily be set as Father God. I'm asking you to remove every stumbling block, Father God, in the name of Jesus that causes us to fall, God. I'm asking you to remove every mountain, Father God, that we cannot climb. I'm asking you right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, to build your people up in your love, Father God, in the name of Jesus that they will be able to experience the true love of it all. Oh God, I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and knowing and believing, Father God, that you loved us so much, Father God, that you gave your only begotten son. You gave him, Father God, not only because you loved the Father God, but because you had a passion for loving us. Huh? Oh God, what deep love you have. He cut that in Help us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, he cut that in to be able to possess that kind of love that you have in your heart. I got shut in the local sea. Help us out today, Father God, to even understand the concept of love. Jesus, help us to understand the concept of love. Jesus, help us out. Oh God, some of us have not even experienced love, even as a child, God. Some of us have not even experienced love, God, so they do not even know the Naka Shut Don't even know how to kill love and even accept love. Oh God, help us on today, Father God. We use that word so loosely. Help us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. They come to the local shut in the to step into your love, to experience your love, and to simply harbor your love within our hearts. Oh God, and take away all that hate, Father God, that we don't like. Take away all that stuff, Father God, that we keep on speaking that we hate. Oh God, help us on today, Father God, because you said love. Because I'm out to do the thing, I can shut now. Help us out today, Father God. Because the passion and love that you have for us, Father God, is covering a whole lot of stuff. It erased a lot of stuff, Father God. Oh God, but it seems like it's so hard for us to simply love one another. Purely, holy, and fervently. Oh God, give it to us, God. Jesus. Help us, God. Help us, Lord. Oh God, and even that secret love, expose a secret love, Father God. Hiding it in a local shot in it like I see that people think that they don't know. Oh my mind, I can see. Oh God, there's some time to love. Oh my mind, I can see. Oh God, give them an all the time love. That's a sexy local shot. Oh God, and still it right now. He's still it right now inside of your people, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that they will have a better understanding of simply what love is. Oh God. Oh God. And even in the midst of us doing it, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, he cut me to local seed and let your people know, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that it gotta first start with simply loving you. Jesus. Because you said that we also love you with all our heart, our body, mind, our soul, with all our might. Oh God, what deep, deep love. And Lord, I think I can see. It may be a time, Father God, in our lives that we cannot even tell you that we love you long. But we want to tell you that we love you right now. We want to tell you that we love you right now, God. If we cheated you out of any love, Father God, and anything we rose up with something out of any you, we pulling it down now. Just to simply tell you we love you, opening up our hearts, God, unto you with all love and pureness in our hearts. Oh God, because you do so much for us, you have done so much for us, Father God, and even in the midst of us going through stuff, God. Jesus, we also still love you, God, but it seems like sometimes, Father God, we put you to blame, God. We put our feelings at you, and we are so bitter. Who put you to blame? We apologize today, and we simply want to say we love you, God. We love you, God, even for the bad, ah, as well as the good, God. 
Lord, have you now? Oh, God. You showed me my work. Oh, God. You placed me in a place of stability. Jesus. You stabilized my thoughts. Yours. Even if everything is trouble 
you to do it right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Touch right now in the most unusual way, God, and let your will be done, God. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Let me tell you about the love of God. Can nothing compare to the love of God? He got some kind of passionate love for us. He got some kind of love for us, baby, that can't nothing that nobody even compare to. They can't even stand up against it. They do not even have enough to even fulfill it. It's a kind of love. The Lord been dealing with our hearts. He been dealing with our hearts. He been dealing with me concerning our hearts. And in the midst of him dealing with me concerning our hearts, he been having me to give it up to you. Having me to give it up to you concerning our hearts because our hearts is in a place where God is not pleased. He want us to have a different kind of heart because that's what's going to get us in heaven. It's not going to be <clears throat> your works. It's, it's not going to be how good you are to people, what you say to people, how you treat people, and it ain't even got any of that to do with that. That part of it is when you're going to stand before the judgment. And then he's going to judge you according to that. But even that is not going to get you in heaven. It's your heart condition. 
the Lord has been telling me that we are suffering from spiritual heart attacks. And in us suffering from these spiritual heart attacks is because of our thought processes, our visual interpretation, and our hearing of things. We bewitch our own selves as well as other people bewitch us and we don't even know that they're bewitching us. And the enemy uses people. And 90% of the time the enemy uses folk they don't even know they're being used. They just don't. They just don't. Love. Love is a word that is used so loosely. And yet people don't even want to simply open up their mouth and say that I love you. There are secret loves that people hold and harbor in their heart, depriving their own selves. There are loves on every kind of level. And a lot of us believe that the lust that we have for a certain thing, a certain person, or, or a certain circumstance or situation is love, and it's not. It's simply not. And this is why we can never overcome a thing. Never overcome a situation because we don't have that love perfected inside of our hearts yet. And this is why it's a stronghold. This is why we are so weak to it. This is why we can't simply stop it. This is why we simply cannot walk away from it. This is why we simply cannot accept the truth about it. It's because that love has not been perfected. And we confuse the two. We confuse the two. We're going to get ready to go to the book. We're going to go to the book. Because the Lord wants us to know some things concerning love. The Lord wants us to understand some things concerning love. All through the Bible, it talks about different kind of loves. It talks about the love that this one woman had for her husband. And her name was Jezebel. She loved her husband so much until when he was of a sad countenance. Meaning his spirit was low and sad and he wanted to think and could not obsess a thing. Could not possess a thing. She, she was so obsessed with the love that she had for him until she killed somebody to make him happy. She loved him that much. She loved him that much. Then there's a kind of love that's spoken about in the Bible that talks about that kind of love that's spoken in the Bible that talks about David and how his wife Loved him so much until she betrayed her very father to nearly save his life. She loved him just that much. And then there's a story in the Bible that talks about the love of a friend. How Jonathan loved David so much. The Bible says he loved him more than he loved a woman. That's some kind of love. Then, the Bible talks about the love of another wife. And she loved her husband so much until she didn't call him by his name. She called him Lord. A lowercase l. Love. Love. The Bible talks about this other woman that loved to be seen and antagonized for it. She loved to be in the forefront so much until the very people that God placed in their lives to help them, she killed all 400 of them. We're talking about love in all different kind of forms. That love, hate thing. Love. It's all kinds of love. Is it really love or is it lust? Because you can love your car. 
more than you love anything else. You can love that money more than you love anything else. You can love that job. Let's talk about the love of money. The Bible declares that it's the root to all evil. Now, let me tell you something. It does not mean that you got to steal and kill for it, but you will because you're loving like that. But it does also mean that you would use people just to get it. You would do things just to get it. You would act some type of way or perform some type of acts just for it. You would even pretend to love because you love money just to get the provision of the benefits of it. We talking about love right now in the different facets of it all. We talking about the kind of love that that causes you to lie about a certain other thing on a certain person just to show your own self to be proved correct. We talking about the kind of love that you have even for your siblings. Huh. That you would very well go and get some things off of them. We ain't talking about the kind of love that you have for folk, for people, for stuff. We talking about them hidden kind of loves that, that is never told or never expressed. And, and they call them them secret crushes, not as love. But what kind of love is it? Is it love or is it obsession? We talking about that kind of love that wants to control a thing or a matter. We talking about that kind of love. That love hate thing. That love hate is a thin line between love and hate. Believe that. Because the Bible declares that Solomon loved David so much until he loved him like his own son. And yet the next second, he hated him so much until he wanted to kill him as an enemy. And he did nothing to him. Nothing. We talking about that kind of love that has us in a place of despair. Love sick. Y'all heard that? Sometimes you be in love or that. And so when that love ain't there, that love ain't around, or you're, you, you're confused, or you're then you don't even eat. You can't even sleep. You can't even halfway function. Or you try to allow things to consume you to keep you from simply facing that love. How about accepting it? How about love's acceptance? We talking about love today, y'all. We talking about love today. What about that kind of love that you have for an individual that Solomon wrote about. Oh, that's some kind of special love right there, baby. You hear what I say? Ooh, how we desire for a man or a woman to love us the way Solomon wrote. That kind of love. What about that kind of love that, that causes you to step in and step out all the time? That kind of love that, that causes you to have some kind of jealousy and that rage. What kind of love is that? We're talking about the different fa facets of love on today. These are the, the things that's inside of our heart. We're still talking about the heart, the passions of the heart. Today's title is Hearts loves transformations. Oh, love will transform you into a thing, baby. <laughs> love will make you act the way, baby, and you don't even want to act that kind of way. Love will make you say a thing, baby, that you regret saying. We're talking about love. I want you to anoint all the people before I get to the scriptures, please. Prophet, the ones that came in that you did not anoint. We're talking about love. We talking about some kind of love today, y'all. Oh, what about that pure love? That pure love, that fervent love. That kind of love that cannot be altered by a mere conversation that you have on the phone. By a mere accusation that was told unto you. That's some kind of deep love, because it can't be altered. <laughs> Oh, wow. What about that kind of love 
back. We try to sweep under the rug. They kind of love that. They cause you to be silent and not say a word. What about the kind of love that you have for somebody so much until you simply walk away from them? And you can love them still. It's okay. What about that accepting kind of love? That, that, that kind of love that you don't want to accept. What about that? Because you don't even know how to accept. What about that? There was a, another story in the Bible that talked about that. It talked about this woman that was married to a prophet. She did not even know how to accept the love that was given to her. And she simply kept walking away. And he simply kept forgiving. Yeah. What about that kind of love? Because the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. First Peter 4 and 8. Love covers a multitude of sins. What kind of love do you possess inside of your heart? Because if you love a person, baby, it ain't going to be hard for you to forgive that person. It's not. If you love them like that. You're not going to hold that thought over their head. You're not going to gonna hold that, that past action or, or that past verbiage that was said. That past thing that was done. You're not going to forgive them for that thing because you love them like that. What matter of love do you possess within your heart? For real. What matter of love? Oh, the love been dealing, dealing with me with Lord. The Lord been dealing with me about that love. See, he's been talking to us about our hearts for the last two months. This is going on the second month here. Okay. Six weeks. Love. Love. Love will make you stay, baby, when you know you need to go. Huh? Did you hear what I say? Love will make you stay when you know it's best for you to go. Oh, I'm saying I, how I know everything I'm telling y'all experienced. I'm not just saying this stuff, just say it. We're talking about the kind of love that you can even forgive your mama and even your daddy when they don't even deserve it. What about that kind of love? What about the kind of love that Jesus talk, I see he talk about all these kind of loves that I'm talking about today. Loving the very person that hates you. Huh. What about that kind of love? That kind of love that you have for that very person that's talking about you, baby. That despises you. What about that kind of love? What about the kind of love you have for your children? Do you love your children so much that you will kill for them, baby, but you won't let nobody else do it? What about that kind of love? What about that kind of love that you choose over your children? What about that? You should only be doing that for God. Abraham did it. The Lord said, kill him. Kill him dead. Show me how much you love me. And he was going to do it. The Lord said, hold it. Because I see the pureness of your heart loving on me, don't touch that kid. Kill that ram. See, the Lord always, I ain't even got to that. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself because I ain't even got to the scripture. What about the love? The love that we have for the treasures and the possessions of this world. What about that? What about that? We won't put it down for God. Oh, there's a story in the Bible about that too, about the rich man. Yeah. He loved all his stuff so much until God said, go sell everything. Get it all away. The Bible declares that it grieved him so he could not even do it. What will you sacrifice for the mere thing we call love? What? 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 <laughs> the 
Bible declares that God is love. He is love. Grab your books. It's a lot of Bibles under your seats. We're going to go to the book. And we're going to talk about our kind of love. And then we're going to talk about the ultimate love. And it's the love of God. But we're going to talk about our kind of love first. We're going to go there first. Because our kind of love is what God has bewitched in our minds and empty in our hearts. Our kind of love. It's what got us confused and wavering in certain areas in our life. Our kind of love is the kind of love that got us with a heart that we cannot even simply forgive. Our kind of love is the kind of love that's got us in a place of pointing the fingers and simply wagging our heads, looking for fault, talking about fault, making accusations, lying, cheats. Our kind of love got us in a place of brokenness and sadness. It's got us in a place where we think we love him and we don't. We ain't even allowed ourselves to be perfected in the kind of love that God talk about. Because our kind of love has us deranged and in a place of rage. Anger, bitterness, all that unforgiveness. Oh, our kind of love. Our kind of love has turned just like that into hate. What kind of manner of love is that? It ain't the love God's talking about. It ain't the love that he told us that we should have. Oh, our kind of love has called our hearts to get hard. Uh, our kind of love has caused us to be in a place of visual deception. We blind and we cannot even see. Currently let's know no far. Our kind of love has caused us to be deaf to the truth of the whole matter. Our kind of love has caused us to enlarge hell y'all. It has. We talking about our kind of love. Oh, I love you so much. Oh, I such and such such. What kind of manner of love do you possess in your heart? <laughs> We're still talking about the heart, the passions of the heart. Our kind of love has been distorted in our lives, even from our very childhood. Our kind of love, our kind of love. It's a kind of love that we think should be a way, and yet it's not going that way. So we don't think it's love. Our kind of love that we saw, what we taught, or what we was learned. It's not the love of God. It's not. It's just not. And this is why. Our relationships are in array. Our marriages are all messed up. Our friendships are in despair. This is why we can't communicate with one another. This is why we can't accept nothing from one another. This is why we can't give nothing to one another. This is why we act a certain type of way or be a certain type of way. This is why we believe a certain type of thing. And we're pointing our fingers, wag our heads. This is why we talk about one another, man. This is why. Because God's love has not been perfected in us. And neither do we want it to be. Because we believe we know how to love. <laughs> what manner of love do you have? Passions of the heart. The name of the sermon today is going to be Heart's Love Transformation. What is going to take to transform your heart to have the, the love of God inside of it? What, 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 what is it? The lusts of love. We're going to start at 1 John, 2nd chapter. Let's go to 1 John, 2nd chapter. 1 John, 2nd chapter. And... We're 
going to start at 1 John 3rd chapter. I want to start right there. <laughs> I want to start right there. 1 John 3rd chapter. Let me give you time to find it. <laughs> First John, third chapter. First John, third chapter. And we're going to start at verse 10. We're going to start at verse 10, and we're going to read it all the way to 24. Read the book for me, prophet, please. In this, the children of God... We're talking about love now. ...are manifest, and the children Hold of... Hold on for a minute, because somebody helping somebody else. Just, just wait one minute, because I don't want nobody to miss nothing today. 1 John, 3rd chapter. We're going to start at verse 10. Get your time. Get yourself situated. Love. We're talking about our kind of love. The kind of love that we are supposed to have. Love. Because it causes us to act and do all kind of stuff. Jesus. I would love for this person to treat me like that, but they don't, so I got to go search for somewhere else. I would love for this person to do this. I would love for this person to be my friend, but since I ain't got no friend, I got to try to find a friend somewhere else. I would love for my family to embrace me like that, but, but since they don't, I got to get my own family. I, I would love for this person to act this way. Uh, uh, love. Oh. I would love to have that. And I would love to have this. And I would love, and then, you, I'm getting ahead of myself. I am. Read the book. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So ask yourself, is it righteous that I don't Love you? I, see, because the Bible declares that we're supposed to love everybody. That's what the Bible declares. We're supposed to love everybody, even our very enemies. We're supposed to love. So, are you a child of God? Because God is love. God is love. So, even in you asking yourself, am I a child of God? Yeah, you may be a child of God, but it, listen. That love has to be perfect. I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Read the book. Read the book. Y'all, I, I want y'all to understand this because I'm going to get back to what I just said. I want y'all to understand this. Start from the top, please. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God. Neither he that loveth. Wait a minute. It says, in this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. And then there's a colon. So it's telling you and telling you that it's two different kind of people. God's people and the devil's people. Okay? It's two different. Read. Whosoever. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye have ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. How many times you heard that? I, I know growing up, some of us heard, you better love everybody. You better love your brother, your sister, love your brother. And so in saying that, we, when, 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 when we was taught, you better love your brother and your sister, we was thinking technically. I got to love my brother no matter what he do. I got to love my sister no matter. They, they did not explain to us that it, they was talking about strangers. They did not explain to us that we got to love even in spite of. They got, we, they, oh, I got to love you because you're my sister. If you want my sister, I would love you. How many of say that? If you want my brother, I would love you. If you want my auntie or my uncle, I do this and I do that. If you want to, see, we feel as if we are obligated to just simply love. What is love? Read. 
For this is the message that ye have ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Yeah. Not, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. So why should I love my brother or my sister when I because you evil if you don't. The Bible declares so. And so when, when he say that, now technically Cain and Abel was literally blood brothers and they was blood brothers. They were blood brothers. In the midst of them being blood brothers, do you know what provoked him to kill his brother graveyard dead? Jealousy. 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 And look at because, the, listen, what kind of love is that? What kind of love? You do not have to kill nobody graveyard dead to murder them. You can simply get on the phone and call somebody and talk to them about somebody else and you murdering them. But you are not saying your part. You are not saying what you did. You're not giving them the whole story. So that person is looking at that person the same way that you speak about them. You're killing them and you want somebody to help you to murder them. That's what you do. Is that what you're supposed to do? Is it? The Bible says that we're supposed to love each other so much until if you see a fault in me, you're supposed to pray for me. He said you're supposed to go talk about me. He said we don't even supposed to be gossiping about one another. We don't even supposed to, oh, I'm just calling the vent. Yeah, you vent your perspective and in you vent your perspective you plant seeds in that person about this person when that person don't even know the truth of the whole matter be careful what you say to both go talk to God talk to him I promise you he'll talk back and do it to me all the time Because so many times I thought I could confide in a person. I thought I could say a thing to a person. Y'all better be careful who you talk to. Make God your friend. Personally. Because he discreet. He ain't going to tell you. He going to hold and he going to tell you when you wrong. Have a heart to accept your part in the matter. Instead of blaming everybody else about the matter. What love do you have in your heart towards the brother, towards the sister? The Bible declares that love covers a multitude of sins. It should not be nothing a person be done said or be done did to you or against you that you cannot forgive. We're so wrapped up. I hate when they do this. I hate when they say this. I hate when they act like this. I hate that food. I don't eat that. I hate that shoe. I hate black people. I hate. We're so wrapped up into hate until we cannot even embrace the concept of love. Of love. Because. It's a whole lot of stuff God hate about us. Oh, but that passionate love he has towards us. It don't make him turn his back to us until he keep on telling us and keep on telling us. Because he said, oh, them that love me will keep my commandments. What is a commandment? A commandment is just not written in his Bible. The Lord can simply come to you and tell you, don't you go over here. Don't you do that. Don't turn that way. Don't talk to that person. Don't do that on your job. Don't do that. That's a command right there. And if you don't keep it, you say you love God. You say <laughs> Because let me tell you something, baby. It's consequences to breaking all the commandments in the Bible 
or simply spoken unto us. How I know? I, proof. I learned from breaking them, not doing them, don't want to do them. So he keep on pounding at you. He keep on pounding. The Lord will keep messing with you and keep messing with you and keep messing with you, baby, until you submit. And, and let me tell you something. He'll do it one way or another. First, he's going to come and keep on bothering you. You ain't going to be able to sleep. He's going to start giving you dreams. You're going to be tossing and turning. And then when you get up, he's going to have that thing heavy on your mind and on your heart. And then the midst of it, you still don't want to do it, baby. And then he start touching things, touching your body. Touching your finances, touching your, it, oh, yeah, oh, baby. Witness, I learned. I learned. He say, if you love me, what manner of love do we have in our hearts? We disobedient, we rebellious, we liars, we cheaters, we deceivers, we manipulators. We do all fashion of stuff towards people, against people, for people. For the sake of our kind of love. Read the book. Read the book. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. I just explained all this stuff he read. Read the book. See, because I, I be trying not to get ahead of myself. But I can't help it. And so everything that he reading, I just spoke. Read. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And and we brought to lay down our lives for the brethren. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to die for nobody else. Don't nobody want to. Everybody's scared to die. So I know you ain't going to die for nobody else. Don't nobody want to die. Everybody want this and everybody want that. Oh, I want this person to love me and I want that person to love me and I want I want to have this and I want to have that. And that. Is it love or is it lust? We can lust after something and confuse it with mere love. Covet and lust, they brothers and sisters, y'all. Twins, identical. Identical. Read. But whoso has this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels and we so for him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? How? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. People believe if I give you this or if I buy you this, I love you. <laughs> If I show you this, so if I'm taking care of you and I'm paying the bills and I'm doing it, I love you. If it, these are the deeds. Do y'all do y'all really think that that is what God is talking about? It's not just see we got uh, the wrong interpretation of love. We got the wrong interpretation. We are blinded by it. Oh, my father and my mother taught me to be a good provider. Oh, I see that. Get, 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 what you, uh, and, and, and I know how to love. That, love. I, the, love. I could count on one hand how many times I saw a man open up a door for a woman here in Mobile, Alabama. I can. I can. I, I'm trying to figure out what manner of men are these. Because I, I, I'm just trying to figure out what's really going on. With... But you want me to be the type of woman you want me to be. You want me to be the type of woman you want me to be. You want me to do a certain thing. You want me to dress a certain way. You want me to act a certain way. You don't want me to do this. You don't want me to do that. You want me to cook. You want me to clean. You want me to lay on my back in a V position. You want to do me all kind of stuff. What manner of man are you? What manner of love do you have for the woman? What manner of love do the woman have for the man? You want to beat me? You, you, you want to talk about me? 
You want to say, I'm not this and I'm not that. I'm not, what, 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 what do we want? And I'm talking about the men and the women and twist it around. Twist it around. Because when they open up my door, baby, I'm leaning over and I'm grabbing that knob and pushing that door open so I'm opening up theirs too. It's a two-way street. What manner of love do you have for one another? What? We think it's all about stuff, gift money. Ain't nobody got to give me one cup of sin, baby. God takes care of me. He been doing it for years. I don't need no money from nobody. I don't need nobody to buy me no houses, no cars, no jewelry. I don't, I don't everything I ever wanted, God ever gave to me. And he had to teach me that. Nothing. When I had to sleep in my truck, me and my kids, he provided for me even then. What man of love do we have for one another? We don't even know how to love, but we say we do. Oh, we say we do. We said, no, you doing what we were taught. What I tell y'all, I was taught, or what I saw and what I said, I was, this is what I was taught. We're talking about it then. I saw my mom and my grandma and them, because they was married. And they cooked, they cleaned, they made sure the house was clean. They did this, they did that. They made sure they loved them. You, that's what I was talking Always, every time I turn around, it was my parents, my, the ones who was in my life, though. They always walked up to the children. Come on, give me a hug. I love you. Always turn us up. So I, I, I still say it today, and I mean that thing with everybody. If I tell you I love you, baby, I love you. You hear what I say? I love you. Love ain't gonna be grudging. It's not gonna hold stuff against you. I can't even stay mad. And even in the midst of an argument, even being mad or whatever, I th the Lord get to show me stuff and then I get the pot. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I go. And then I try to reconcile that thing. But then that anger and that rage, what matter of love do we have for one another? It is not easy for you to forgive. It's not easy for you to just but it's easy for us to go and do the contrary. It's easy for us to do that as a whole. What manner of love do we have for our brothers and our sisters? Marriage, relationships, friendships, courtships, whatever ship. What manner of love? What? What? If your enemy walk up to you right now, and ask you, can I have some of your sandwich? I'm so hungry. You're going to be looking at the. <laughs> girl, bro, I ain't getting you. I can't. Be... Girl, you know that girl had the audacity to ask me for a piece of my sandwich. Talk about she hungry. I was too when I asked her to do this for me, and she did. And then she flat out going to tell me such, 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 such. That's how you. That... We a mess. What man? What manner of love do we have in our hearts that we think and believe we are practicing appropriately? What? What manner? What manner? 1 John 2. 1 John chapter 2. I just want you to read two scriptures. I just want you to read two scriptures of that. 3. 15 through 17. Read the book. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. That's what we do. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We, that's what we do. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, yeah. the lust of the eyes, yeah. <laughs> and Everything I said. the pride of life is it? not of the Father, but is of the world. Are y'all following that? Because we too prideful to walk up to somebody and even confess. You know what? I did this. I did that. Such, 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 such. And I'm sorry. But in our sight, we so prideful. I, I am not going to go say that. I am not going to. How many times I don't want to say it, I'm sorry to somebody apologize to me. And I wasn't even wrong. I ain't even did nothing. Oh, wait a minute. Hold, hold, hold. Wait. Let, let me cover myself. Because don't nobody do nothing when they believe they're right. I ain't did nothing wrong, so I ain't saying I'm sorry. You ain't did nothing wrong, so you ain't saying you sorry. So that pride is standing right here, and it's a brick wall that's causing what? Division. Don't nobody do. We do not even have enough love in our heart to be perfected to even see the mere truth. And guess what? 
Don't let nobody try to come and show you the truth or tell you the truth. You don't even want to hear that. What kind of love do we got for one another? What? We walk around here and say, oh, the Lord taught me this, and the Lord told me this, and I believe this, and that. Yeah, but it ain't it. He may have told you, and he may have showed you, baby, but you ain't learned, and it ain't been perfected. Oh, come on. It mean it. Confess it. We don't want to confess nothing. The Bible says confess your thoughts one to another and then pray for one another that you may be healed. We too embarrassed and shame to even confess that we was wrong or did something or such and such and such and such because we think somebody going to talk about us or they're going to point their finger and wag their head until we don't even know that that person may need some prayer that they may be healed. Because we don't want to confess nothing. We too cotton pick and prideful. Love. Ha. What manner of love? Do we possess? Read that last scripture. Because all this stuff that you want and desire, guess what? It ain't going to be here it too much longer. Believe that. Read. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God <laughs> abideth forever. The will of God. The will of God. That, we ain't even got to the nitty gritty yet. First John chapter 4, and I want you to start at verse 4. First John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, and I want you to start at verse 4. Now, we finna get to the nitty gritty of it. We finna get to the nitty gritty of it. But you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to read these three scriptures right quick before we read that. Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love. No, no. Go ahead. Read. 1 John. Chapter 4, verse 4. I'm excited now because we get to the nitty gritty. Read. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. You have overcome some stuff. You are God's. Come on, read. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That he is the Lord. So if you allow him to come into your heart and tell you some things about you, show you some things about you, teach you some things about you, then you will be able to step into that place of beginning to know how to love because we really do not know how to love. We think we do, but it's just actually the lusts. Now, it's some things inside of our lives that we have overcame through the lusts of our flesh addictions and all this other different other kind of stuff which was not easy I know old man another witness so read because I'm going I'm, I'm just going to pass it up read the book they are of the world therefore speak ye speak they of the world so and the world heareth what you learn you speaking what you were taught this is all this 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 different other stuff. I, how many times your mom say you gotta make sure that you go to school, get your diploma, and then you gotta go to college, or you got to go to the service, or you got to do this, or you got to do that in order to obtain this. And so they teaching you all them lustful things, aren't they? They teaching you all the lustful stuff. Jesus. They they wanna teach you how to get out there and, and, and fall in love with money. They want to teach you how to get out there and fall in love with the treasures of this land. They want they, confuse. I, 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 the Lord had me tell a few people everything that you were taught as a kid, throw it out the window and let's start on. Because it was wrong. It was wrong. How I know? He had to make me do it. He had to make me do it. And that's why. Don't nobody want to hear nothing I got to say. Because I'm going to give it to you, baby, and I'm going to give you the truth. It's going to make you free. It's going to help you. Don't get mad. If you do, oh well. <laughs> Join the club. There's millions of people who mad at me. I across a whole lot of folk that hate me and don't want to hear the mere truth. Lord, give us a heart of acceptance. Just raise your hand and say, Lord, give me a heart of acceptance to accept the truth. Come on, raise your hand, raise your hand. Lord, give me a heart of acceptance to accept the truth because it will make us free. It'll make us free, baby. See, sometimes we got to be made into some things. Read the book. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. <laughs> For he that is not of God heareth not. That, and, and you wonder why you don't want to hear nothing? You wonder why you don't want to accept nothing? You wonder why, oh, they said this and I don't believe that and I rebuke it in the name of you. Okay, keep rebuking, but sit there and watch. 
Read. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Come on, what I say. How many times when God gets to talking to you about you and showing you, he's going to show you you. You have to have a heart of acceptance to realize you err just like me, you, him, her, they, we, all of us. Everybody got some kind of error in them. Everybody got some kind of fault in them. Ain't nobody got it all together. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and know of God. You got to first be born again. You got to be transferred. This is why he gave me that. This is why he gave me that title. Hearts love transformation. Baby, you got to be transformed into some things. You ain't going to just know how. Let, let me finish. Let, let, me, let me just finish. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And sent his son to be propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we are also, also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. How in the cockpicking world can we sit up and say, oh, I love the Lord so much. What? And you cannot even love one another and you'll see them each and every single day. How do you even know that God is real? How? You can't feel him. Can't touch him. Can't see him. How you know? How you know? You got to first be born again. You got to be born again and then that's when that love, that heart, that heart. The love's transformation starts taking place, baby. You're not going to think the same. You're not going to act the same. You're not going to live the same. Oh, stuff going to just start dropping off of your phone. You're going to start realizing some things. It goes on to tell you. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love is perfected in us. How can his love get perfected in us? By bringing some stuff that's in the dark into the light. Simply about what's inside of your heart. For the Bible declares that the heart is deceitful and, de and desperately wicked. Above all things, we're gonna, you don't even know what's inside of your heart. You don't even know all that stuff that's mangled and tangled inside of your heart. And you're wondering why you got them strongholds. You're wondering why you're shackled and chained. You're wondering why your mind always running wild with you. You're wondering why you always wavering, jumping in, jumping out. You're wondering why everything is in despair for you. Because that love has not yet been perfected. And we do not allow God to even perfect that love inside of us because we feel like we already know how to love. Oh, I was taught how to love. Oh, yeah, by who? Because your mama and daddy did not even love right. Oh, my, you know? I'm telling you what God is saying. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. The Bible declares that we are the first fruits of his spirit. It's written in the book of Genesis. The first fruits of the We were the first beings that even came into an existence that had an encounter with his spirit. It's inside of us already. We are human beings. Human beings. So, if he put that thing inside of us, he already put that love inside of us, as well as a measure of faith. He gave it to each and every last one of us. But, it has not yet been perfected. Why have it not been? Because we have all kind of vain imaginations. We exalt every and every problem we have above God. God is love. God says, <laughs> he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that we may have life and have it more abundantly. He wants us to prosper financially even as our soul prosper spiritually and he wants us to be in good health oh what man I love is that we talking about somebody who gave it who gonna get a child up for death for the land nobody for the people nobody for us to literally step into his love he demonstrated how love is supposed to be when he came down here and kept talking to us when he came down here and, and told us them be attitudes let's start there ha. when he came down here and tried to give us a, a different formation in our brain in our neurons oh no we didn't want to do that we didn't want to do that 
And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Hereby is our love made perfect. There it go again. Because it can only be perfected through God. Only. Nobody else can teach you. Nobody else can show you. Nobody else can come form and act to prove it. Nobody but God. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world. This world. Not there because you got a first baby to get it right here before you can go to that world. You got it first. Because that's a whole new key. The Bible goes on and say this. There is no fear in love. What are you afraid of? Afraid of being alone. Afraid of not having no money. Afraid of not having a roof over your head. Afraid of not being accepted. Afraid of not having no job. Afraid of not this. Afraid of what in the world is you afraid of? The Bible declares that there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. I'm not afraid of nothing. Nothing in this life. Not me. I'm not afraid to be alone. I've been alone by myself for a long time, baby, and it feels real good because I know God is with me. And I ain't got to worry about anything. I know. I'm not afraid of not having no money because I ain't had it. And he done been my provider. He done showed me. I'm not afraid of losing my children because I lost them before they didn't speak to me for years. And yet God was there. I'm not afraid of not being accepted because when he first called me into ministry, baby, they rejected me all over. So I don't give a rest to you who don't want me, who don't want to receive me. I don't care. I'm not afraid of not even my mother loving me or my father. My father died when I was a kid and my mama, she loved everybody more than she loved me because son and I siblings all my life. I'm not afraid of that. I'm not. There is nothing in this world that can fear me. I done had a gun pulled to my head, trigger pulled, knives at my throat. I done tried, done somebody try to suffocate me and even drown me underwater. I'm not afraid of nothing. There's nothing nobody can say to me that caused me to be, ooh, Mufasa. No, I'm not, I'm not afraid. I'm not scared of anything. I'm not. And that's just me. Because I went through so much. I experienced so much. And it's probably for this reason and this perfect, this perfect, this purpose right now. See, some love has to be perfected inside of your heart in order for you to even admit you're a big old mess. Yeah. For you to accept, oh, that's me, God. Help me, Lord. You go, you get to going down there. You get the fast and you get the praying because you want God to break some things off of you. You cannot help nobody if you have not experienced a certain other thing. You know, how are you going to come and try to tell me something about something that you ain't even went through that? You don't know. You don't know how it feel. You don't, you don't know. How? How could you say, oh, I know how you feel. No, you don't. You don't know how to you you don't know how I feel to be in sorrow when you lose the very thing that you thought was most important to you. My sister, when she died, oh no, nobody know how I felt in watching her die. No. So don't come at me telling me you know how I feel, because you don't know how I feel. You don't know how I feel about this. You don't know how I feel about that. You don't know, oh, I did it. If God do not reveal that thing to you, baby, and you ain't got that discernment, you don't know Jack Dilly or Squaw. You just don't. You don't know how I feel to be hungry and I didn't have no food. Girl, I gave it to my kids because guess what? I want them to eat. I'm all right. You don't know how I feel. Not to have no place to stay steadily. It ain't easy, is it? Not to be jumping from house to house doing this. It ain't easy for people to accept you, not just you, but your very children. They don't know how you feel, do they? I know how you feel, baby. I know exactly how you feel when won't nobody just simply give you a helping hand when you done helped oh so many and then they try to hold your past over you. Ha, when you trying to do better. I know how you feel. What's your name? 
I know how you feel, Whitney. I got you. I know. I know how you feel. I know how it feels. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can't come up here and tell me nothing if you have not experienced that thing. How you all love somebody oh so much and they simply cannot love you mutually. I, I know how that feels. But yet you still got to love them. Are you... I know how I feel for a person to lie on you. <laughs> and it's a mere lie. And you have not even a chance to tell your truth. Oh, baby. I know how I feel. Rejection. I went through all that time at a young age. Baby, I'll be 53 in a few months. And even still now going through stuff. I know how I feel. Did you hear what I say? I know how it feel. Time after time after time again, you be pouring out and pouring out and trying to prove so much. And yet still, it ain't enough, is it? It's not enough. I know how I feel. <laughs> oh, yeah. What manner of love do you have? See, because it got to be perfected inside of you in order for you to still be able to talk. To still be able to walk, to still be able to not break down, to still be able to love those people sincerely. I know how I feel to get beat all the time. Baby. <laughs> and even when you just simply shut it down. I know how I feel to be yelled at all the time. I know how I feel to be have people have rage against you and you just looking at them like, what the world? I I'm uh, I know how I feel. I know how I feel while you trying to figure out what really did I, and then you get to be like, well, maybe it is me. And then you go to Lord, Lord, research me, God, what am I to do that? Baby, I know how I feel. I know. I know. But when that love of God is perfected inside of you, babe, you still praying for that person. Lord, touch them. Touch them in their heart and their mind, God, that they may clearly see. Lord, touch their finances, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and make them wait for them. Oh, God, touch them. Baby, I know how it is to still love and labor for a person, even in spite of it all. I'm talking pure love. I'm talking that kind of love, baby, that cannot be altered by a mere thing that a person say or action. I'm talking about that kind of love that keep on, keep on, keeping on. <laughs> That's the kind of love I'm talking about. That's the kind of love the Bible talks about. It says that there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. It torments you. You are tormented each and every day of your life if you are afraid of being alone. You're going to always be tormented. Oh, I got to be with somebody. That's why you keep jumping from this man, jump from this woman, jump that. That's why you ain't got no stability in your life and you're always wavering, being tossed over here and tossed over. That's why you're the way you are. Mentally unstable. Ha, can I even get no leverage in your thoughts to make a sound decision? That's why. I'm telling you what he told me now. I'm just sharing it with you. Don't take it personal, make it personal. The Bible declares there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear have torment. He that fear is not made perfect in love. Are y'all following me? You're not made perfect in love if you're scared all the time of different other stuff. And I don't care what area or what level it is. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he have seen, how can he love God whom he have not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Now, that I done told y'all about. I kind of love. Let's talk about that passionate love that God has for us. He got some kind of love for us that he want to put inside of us that we will be able to altercate and transfer it into one another. Can we do that? Come on. It's praying time. 
Let's pray about some of this a little bit. Let's pray about some of this stuff that we need God to help us with. Let's pray about some of this stuff that's inside of our hearts. See, because we got all this stuff inside of our hearts that the Bible says and declares that we also love the Lord with all our heart, all our body, all our soul, and with all our mind. And if we love God, then we are opening up our hearts, our minds, our body, and our soul in order to be able to love somebody else. If we love God and allow him to perfect that thing inside of us, then it won't be so easy for us to simply walk away from somebody, something, some situation that, oh, you claim that you love. Baby, let me tell you how you're going to fight for that one that you love. Did not God die for us? He loved us just that much. Who going to die for who in here? Who going to die for who in here? Who love another person so much until your problems become my problems? Your situation become my situation. Your concern become my concern. Your brokenness in your heart becomes part of my heart. How about that kind of love when God intertwines a thing? What about that? Because we are all intertwined together, baby. We talking about that kind of love and cannot change you. That's the kind of love we're talking about. The kind of love that needs to be possessed inside of us. But that situation, that concern, that altercation, that very thing that's inside of our hearts, it stops us, haunts us, steals us into loving and doing what we want to do when it ain't even begin to be perfect. Jesus help us. Huh? We're talking about some love. We're talking about some love. We're talking about the kind of love the Bible talks about that's in a little child. That's that kind of love that'll get you past something that gets God's attention. That faithful love. See, because God was faithful towards us. He's just towards us. Oh, baby. He all kind of stuff. Just for me, you, him, her, they, me. All of us. We talking about hearts, loves, transformation. I want you to write some things down on a yellow sheet of paper. And that red pen. I want you to write some things down and I want you to simply loose some things. Because the Bible declares that love covers a multitude of sins. Give your husband some too. Because there's some things he need to lose. And he need to let go. We talking about some stuff that's harboring down inside of our hearts. That's preventing us from being perfected in that love. Come on, everybody grab some red paper, red pens, and yellow paper keto. Pass it out to the people. Everybody. Everybody, write down this stuff. And the very thing, afterwards, I want you to write your name and say, Lord, perfect that love in me, God. Perfect that love in me. That I may be pleasing in your sight. That I may be able to love fervently, God, with a pure, truthful, sincere heart. Perfect that love in us, God. Everybody, write that thing down. Please don't pass me back. We got pins in the seats. Get the pins out the seat, baby. Give it to the people. Uh-uh, she won't get it. You may need to sit down and write. You can sit down and write. Jesus, write down all that stuff. Lord, perfect that look. Y'all can sit down and write that stuff. Because it may be a whole lot. It may be a whole lot of stuff. That here, you got me. Lord, perfect that love in us, God. Give it to us, God. We need you to give it to us, God, because we cannot obsess it or obtain it on our own. God, we done tried. Oh, Lord, we done tried. Help us, God. Each 
each and every last one of us, God, as we write this stuff down. All that stuff that's inside of our heart, God. All that bitterness, God. All that unforgiveness, Lord. All that stuff from our childhood, God. All that stuff from our, our adolescent years. All that stuff from our teenage years. All that stuff, Father God, from our young adult years. All that stuff from our middle age years, God. And even our geriatric years. Ah, oh, God, move it. And perfect your love inside of us. Perfect it inside of us, Father God, that we will not continue to err. Give us a heart to accept it, God. That we can simply see our own selves. Help us, God. Help us, God. That you may complete the work that you be God. Help us, God. That we can clearly see, Father God, that you are He and the only one that can do it. Help us, God. Oh, God, untangle the hardness of the heart, that stony heart. Break up the follow ground inside of our hearts, Father God. The hearts love transformation. Transform our hearts, God, that it will be acceptable in your sight. Oh, God, that we may be able to love purely, God. Family, one another, help us, God. Woo! We need you to help us. We need you to help us, Father God, to let go of some things, God, that was said to us. To forget some things, Father God, that was done to us. Help us, God. Perfect that love, God. Because it's digging kind of deep inside of us, Father God. And we don't even know how to bring it up. We don't want to keep seeking God. We don't want to be shackled in our thoughts, Lord. Over and over again, repetitively, God. Repeating the cycles of the flesh. Jesus, help us, God. Our motivators in our minds, God. That we will want the more. We cry now for your help. We cry now for your help, God. That we will forgive. Oh, God, and pray for one another. Confessing some things. Confessing some things, God. Admitting some things. Opening up some things. Unveiling. Oh, God. Unveiling some things, says God. Oh. oh, God. Do it for us. Do it for us, God. And in the midst of you unveiling that thing, give us a heart to accept the thing, God. To accept the simple truth of the whole matter. We want you to break it off. Circumcise it, God. Because it's not useful for me, you, him, or they It's not useful in your vineyard, God. Oh, God. Change us. Change us. We can't do it by ourselves. We done tried. We done tried, Father God, to forgive, but it's fake. We done tried, Father God, to forget, but we can't. We done tried, Father God, to overlook a matter, Father God, but it seemed like it's still smacking us in our mere face. Oh God, we done tried. Help us, God. Help us, God. We cry out to you. We cry out to you for your perfection. We cry out to you for your wholeness. We cry out to you for your completeness, God. Remove that spirit of fear, God. <laughs> Cast out that spirit of fear, God. Oh, God, that it'll be okay, God. And all will be well. And yes and amen. Help us, God. Oh, God, help us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. To be rectified in our air. Jesus. Rectification is coming, y'all. I'm telling you, I just saw that thing. He gonna unveil some things. He just said it. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. Right down on there. Your name. Lord, perfect your love in my heart. That's it. And it just what he meant. It's gonna cover Lord, perfect your love in my heart. That's what you ought to write. Everybody. I don't even know what to do. I feel his presence so strong.
I want y'all to write it down twice. The first time I want y'all to write it down. I want y'all to give it to Minister Simeon so that he can tape it on the wall. The second time I want y'all to write it down. I want y'all to put it on the altar. I want y'all to put it on that altar. Write your name. Lord, perfect your love in my heart. change my heart. Write it down twice. One goes on the wall and one goes on the altar. Write your name. Lord, change my heart. Lord, change my heart. Write it down twice. Write it down twice, one for the altar and one for the wall. change our hearts, God. Lord, perfect that love that, that you want to perfect inside of us, Father God, because we really don't even know how to do it on our own, God. Change us today. We're going to move our own agendas out the way, God. We're going to move ourselves out the way, Father. We want you to change us. We want you to fix us. Because we cannot do it on our own, God. We done tried. We done tried to express the love that we knew how to express Father God but then we know now God that it's not the kind of love that you have ordained for us to have Father God we are searching ourselves right now God we're searching our hearts we're searching our minds we're searching our bodies on today God change us on today Father God change our attitudes and our way of thinking and perceiving a certain thing change our actions towards one another Father God change us on today Father God in the name of Jesus and let us be in your will according to your perfect will Father God and in order for your perfect will to take place Father God I'm asking you to remove that spirit of rebellion and disobedience Father God that we will be able to simply Father God forgive one another give us a heart of absolutions God give us a heart of peace give us a heart of love on today Father God Lord, even our very enemies, Father God, not only did you say you will make them our first two, God, but you said you will make them at peace with us. Let our enemies be at peace 
with us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Change us on today, Father God. And even in the way that we react to things, Father God, that we will not perform an act, Father God, that we will simply regret. Change us on today, Father God. Change our way of perceiving a thing, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And to thinking and believing that a person will not change. Oh God, we put it in your hands so that you can make that change. Help us on today, God. Help us on today, God. Creating us a clean heart. Clean us up. Clean up our mind. Clean up our thoughts. Clean us up on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Remove that spirit of perversion, God. Perversion your word, God. Perversion in our lives, God. Perversion in our minds, God. Perversion in our homes and even our actions, God. Change us, God. Change us, God. Ah. Change us, God. Transform our hearts. Transform us today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. That we will be in a place of clarity and understanding. That we will not lead to our own understanding. Give us that kind of love for one another, Father God, that you speak about in the Bible, God. Give us that kind of love, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we can completely and solely and wholly and purely forgive one another, Father God. Give us that kind of heart of love, Father God, that we will not hold nothing over one another's head, Father God. Give us that kind of love, Father God, that we will forgive folk that even did not even hurt us, God, and that did hurt us. Help us out today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, to have the kind of heart, Father God, of pureness and fervency. Oh, God, change us out today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we will not continue, Father God, to run into these cycles of repetitive acts. Oh, God, help us out today, Father God. Give us that love, God, that we will not have fear. Give us that love, God, that we will not be tormented. Give us that love, God, and perfect it inside of us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we'll be able to even overturn our way of thinking. Oh, God, help us not to be conformed, Father God. Help us to not run to the lessons of the flesh and of this world, Father God. Oh, God, because you say greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Oh, God, help us out today, Father God, to put our direction towards you, Father God, and have a passion for you, Lord, and to simply love the way that you claim that you are going shot now that you wanted us to love. Oh, God, help us out today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Help us out today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, to break the chains and the shackles of the mind and even of the flesh, Father God. Help us out today, Father God, change your thing, rearrange your thing. Settle a thing and simply erase a thing. Oh God, do it. Do it for your people on today, Father God. Because the only way that we can please you is through love. And Lord, you say that you are God of love. And the only way that we're gonna possess that love, Father God, is if you put it inside of us, God. Put that love inside of our hearts, put it in our minds, God. Put it in our bodies, God. Put it inside of our lives today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And in the midst of your doing it, God, uh, remove the scales of our eyes that we can clearly see. Unstop our ears uh, that we can clearly hear. Unveil the truth of love, God. Do it, Jesus. Do it, God. Do the unveiling today. Unveil it in a mind. Unveil it in a heart. Unveil it in our lives. Unveil it in our bodies on today, Father God. We're going to move out the way and let you do it, Father God. See, we've been doing it our way long enough, says God. Huh? We're going to move ourselves out the way. We're going to move ourselves out the way.